If you are like me, the first thing you do when you get up is to check your email and answer texts on your smartphone. You spend the remainder of the day on tablet, mobile devices, laptop, or desktop computer, whether for personal or professional reasons. Messages, browsing, friending, and sharing are all things you are doing. It's wonderful that we have the technology to instantaneously communicate with people all around the world, especially during the pandemic. But there is also a sense of isolation. The local world doesn't capture our complete attention if there is an internet-capable gadget with a screen nearby. Also, inspired by the book called Fahrenheit 451, I started thinking about how the theme of technology can be connected to our life. So, what is the impact of technology on human relationships? During last year, the issue that I'm always wondering about the technology and the relationships is the inability to detect tone. It's impossible to tell if someone is sarcastic, humorous, serious, or joking. The lack of conversation context made me always think about what someone meant by their words, whether on social media, in a text. Or email. Unless you see the person's face, hear their voice, and understand the environment, you have no idea of the context around the written words. Misunderstandings, miscommunications, and assumptions all have impacts on how we view others. What's more, online context falls short on empathy. There is no doubt that words are powerful. However, while people are saying, "I'm so sorry for something." I feel bad for you. It's so funny, haha. Maybe compassion and solidarity certainly do exist within the soul of the person who texted, posted, or emailed this. But words alone don't necessarily convey that emotion. Next, the lack of physical touch. Sometimes, maybe you just need a hug, a handshake, or a pat on the back. But the reality is, I get stickers and emojis on social media. During the pandemic, I spend most of my time at home alone. Although Ib has a lot of work to do, I still felt lonely, especially at the moment when I feel depressed and need a hug. There is no one in home. Last but not least, tech overload leads to cocooning. Technology has become an electronic addiction for some, drawing them away from the actual world as they clutch to its features. And like with most addictions, it affects the amount of quality of interpersonal interactions. Social media and email conversations are replacing traditional interactions and talks. Soon, a people won't even need to leave the house to speak with others, and many won't. The cocooning tendency leads to social isolation for some people, which might be devastating. But is it that negative for everything? Surely, no. I remember when I was researching, I really like what the sociologist Eric Klemberg from NYU said: the quality of social interaction can reduce the loneliness of a person instead of the quantity of social interaction. It is important to have more meaningful interactions with friends instead of merely liking each other's posts on social media. We need to go offline and meet friends, doing something fun and finding our potential. Although all of us are online, maybe we can try to join a program to do some group activities together. Or maybe we can challenge ourselves to do something that we have never done. Also, now most of things are reopened, so in order to have a more fun and fulfilling life, we should always try out different things. Maybe start your horseback lesson. Maybe join a band. Maybe do some art. 
or maybe just walk outside and enjoy the weather. In the end, I want to say that don't be afraid to get your feet wet. We are all living our first and the only life, trying all kinds of things for the first time. Be curious and be brave.